Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brightenyourdays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. So I've been going through this whole conundrum with spirituality and religion. So I grew up going to church every Sunday. I first, we went to a Lutheran church and then we went to a Christian church. Like my parents were trying to find the right fit for us. And so we did go to a few different churches, but it was every Sunday that we would go. And I just remember being told that God was just some guy in the sky that is punishing all of us and we deserve it. And I am so unworthy and this and that. Right. And so that is the belief that I took with me through a lot of my life. And then I found more of the spirituality side of this divine love of this God of this spirit, of this bigger than life creator of life who lives within me and who is part of me, who I am that right now. And that opened me up in a way that religion never did. It anchored and rooted me deeper in a faith that life is happening for me versus against me, that I'm being punished. And so for me, the way I'm raising my child is going to be a lot different than I was raised. I mean, there is a place for religion and parenting. I do believe that we need to teach our child the the beliefs between wrong and right and being a good and kind human and being a loving human and being a loving person. But I do believe that there are some (laughs) non-truths that I was raised with that I'm going to make sure that Everett does not embody, does not like swallow up and drink up and make it the truth for his life. And so I do believe we have to teach our kids We have to teach our kids some form of there is a creator that is bigger than us, that has created this world, that loves him, that loves her, that loves us, and that basically we are a piece of that love. And so every night, you best believe I'm telling Everett that he is the light of the world. (laughs) I'm telling him he was created perfect in the image of the one who creates worlds. And I know that if those words were said to me as a child, there would have been a lot of different things that would have happened. I would not have felt so alone. There wouldn't have been a place where I felt so alone that I wanted to end my life because I would have known that I there was no way that I was alone in that time. That even in my darkest pain, there was light there. There was love there. That that would have sufficed for me to know that I can get through the day a little bit more. And so that is what I want. That is what I want for my child. And I know for every mom, we all have our different religions. So I'm not going to pigeonhole and say there's one, one way or right way to teach your kids. But I definitely think there is a part that kids need to know. There is definitely a way to be a parent. You can do it by yourself and you can definitely do it with a partner. There can be same sex partners. I mean, there is, it's endless, the amount of ways that you can become a parent now. And I do believe that we both women and men, we both have masculine and the feminine energy. And at any given time, we get to decide what we're more using. Like the feminine energy is more of the receiving and more of the relaxing into more of the nurturing and caretaking. Whereas the the masculine energy is more of the doing and more of the going after it. And I think at any given time, depending on what we are doing, we need to lean in more or less in what the feminine or the masculine energy. I don't believe it's a man or a woman thing. I believe it's an energy thing. And so each child is going to call for something different. Like some children really, really thrive with the feminine energy of the nurturer. And some children really thrive with the masculine energy, I think, for parenting. Because I definitely even watching Everett... 
<laughs> with like most of the time my husband is at home. It's just me and Everett. And I do see the difference when he's around my brothers or when he's around other men versus when it's just he's around me. So I do know that there is a balance that needs to be had for raising our kids to know what it is to have both of those energies around, whether it's both energies from the same person or it's being around different energies of feminine and masculine. And I don't think there is one right way to parent. Oh, absolutely not. There is multiple ways to parent. And honestly, if we lead from a place of love, isn't that, I think, what it's all about? Like if we just know that all we want is for our child to know that they are loved unconditionally, that they get to be who they are and we're not gonna judge them, we're not gonna stop loving them just because of the person that they are. I think honestly, that's it. That's the answer for parenting is how can we learn to love our child for who they are right now in this moment in front of us? This is new for me. So conscious parenting, I don't know how new it is, but it is definitely very new to me. I definitely grew up from a place of you do something wrong, you're going to be punished and you're going to be disciplined and it's going to hurt. Like you're going to suffer. And so when I was pregnant with Everett, I knew there had to be a different way. So I started looking online and I started finding books that talk about conscious parenting and leading from a place of love instead of fear. And one of the books that I read, yeah, I have it. Let me grab it proper name, Loving Our Kids on Purpose, which is by Danny Silk, Making a Heart-to-Heart Connection. So Loving Our Kids on Purpose. That book taught me that we get to choose in each moment to love our kids on purpose, even as we're disciplining them. What we're doing essentially is teaching our kids to be adults, responsible adults in the world. And it starts with us. A lot of the times what we do is we send our kids out into the world and expect them to learn how to function in the world. But a lot of it has to start at home. So we have to teach our kids right from wrong. And a lot of the times we want to be the alpha, the one in charge. And it's because I said so. I'm the parent. You do as I say. But the book talks all about giving our kids choices, letting them know that they have choices. Like you did this and this is the consequences of your action. So from this choice that you did, you get to choose A or B. And they have to be choices that we parents can live with. They both have to be choices that we have decided are fair for the the crime, (laughs) so to speak, the kid has done. So we don't stop disciplining our children. We just do it from a place of like, they have autonomy. They get to make a choice on how they're going to move forward based on what they did. One of the stories in the book that I really love is where the boy was put in his bedroom and said, it's time to go to bed. You can play in here. You can play in here, but you have to keep it down. And eventually you have to go to sleep and you can't turn on the light and you can't leave the room. Well, what does the kid do? The kid starts playing really loud and it gets really crazy in there. So the dad goes in the room and says, are you tired? And the kid says, no, I am not tired. And the dad's like, well, I have something for you to do. Would you like to do do something now that you're not tired? And the kid said, yes. So he (laughs) has the kid doing some chores in the house because the kid's not tired. Well, you best believe once the chore was done and he asked the kid, are you tired now? The kid was like, yes, absolutely. This is the same rule. You have to go into your room. You don't have to go to bed right away, but you can't be loud. And because of that story, it shows to me that normally what I would assume is we would go in the room and yell at the child. if We would make them go to bed and it just be a fight. But from this story, what it was is if you're not tired, that's fine. You get another choice and let's do a choice that mom or dad will be happy with. And it's going to help you get tired. And so there's very many stories of that in this book of how we can choose to love our kids from love, but also giving them choices as they're going forward. And another one of the stories is about boundaries. Like we protect the things we love. And so our children, we love our children. And so we have to set healthy boundaries for them. We have to let them know what is right and what is okay and what we're going to tolerate early on as early as possible. And doing that from a place of, I love you so much. And this is the reason for this boundary. And so I believe that leading from a place of love, it's 
taken me a lot of reading. Like I have to read about this. I have to be surrounded by parents that are actually practicing this, knowing that it's, there's a different way to do it. I know it's going to take me a lot of work because it's definitely not in my programming. It's definitely not in my nature. It's something completely new for me, but I do see the benefits of it. Even now with Everett and the way I get down to his level and look him in the eyes and tell him why I'm saying no, even with him being this age, I'm letting him know, like I'm giving examples. It doesn't just stop because mom says so. And when he spills something on the floor, I'm not yelling and screaming at him. We're getting a cloth and we're cleaning it together and letting him know that his mistakes are part of life. So I do think there's a million multiple ways to parent. But the reason why I say love wins is because it, our kids aren't afraid of us. Like I want, my dream is when my son has his hardest days to be able to come to me and be able to tell me about it, be able to trust that I'm not going to fly off the handle, that I'm going to be able to handle his mistakes. Like I don't have fear for him growing and maturing into who he is meant to be. It's a crazy world that we live in right now. And especially even recently in the U.S., there's another school shooting and it breaks, breaks my heart that we live in a world where we have places like school where we send our children and we think and we know that they'll be home at the end of the day. And to be able to send your kid to a school and not know if they're going to be home at the end of the day. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying and scary. And so it has to come to a place where you have to feel safe within yourself to make those decisions. Like I have honestly been contemplating what is it like to homeschool a child? I have look, been looking into what is it like to homeschool a kid this young? And is that the best option? Because it is a scary out there. Not everybody's going to love our child as much as we do. And making those choices has to come from, from the parent, has to come from a heart-centered place of, yes, there's fear, but also it has to come from a place of love. So for me, instead of letting fear rule me, I am letting love lead. And so that, I think the most loving thing I could do for my son is to not send him to a place that I'm going to be terrified all day, every day and not be able to function as if he's gone. Right. And so making these decisions from a place of I'm going to feel safer at this moment in time, if my kid is homeschooled for the next one or two years, and then we can address it later, what's better or what we could do moving forward, I think is just the parent by parent basis. It's just the world is not as like it used to be back in the day when I was a kid, we would just go play outside. Right. And we'd play until the, the streetlights came up. And now it's a lot different. It's a lot different. And we are more awake and aware to the scariness of the world. And so we have to be vigilant and we have to be aware and we have to not put blinders on to what is actually happening in the world. We have to know, right? So from that, and then once you are aware and awake, then you can make a better decision for yourself and for your family. But yeah, it's a, it's a tough choice. It's a tough choice to decide how you're going to parent and to make that decision. It's not something I don't think any parent should take lightly. It should be definitely a decision that is sat with and and really, really sit with and figure out if it's going to work for you and your family. Because even with, like I'm saying, schooling, I never thought I was going to ever thought about homeschooling my child. I always imagined how simple and easy it would be just send my child to school. But now, because of the way the world is, my thoughts are changing. My beliefs are changing. 100% you have to be confident in yourself and you have to have trust in yourself that you want the best for your child and you are parenting from like when you make that decision that you're parenting from a place of love it starts to remove the guilt because if truly in your heart and your soul like every decision you make is you're making it from a place of is this loving for my child is this the next step for my child? Because each child is different. Like even with potty training, they say some kids will be potty trained at two, some at three. And that's why I truly believe in like letting your child lead, following by their example. Like when they're ready for the next step, they will let you know. And they're each so unique and so individual that we can't have a one size fits all for parenting. I don't even see how that would even be possible because you could even have two kids in the same house have completely different different wants and different needs and be completely different little humans. And so it's a case by case basis. Absolutely. And letting your child lead and 
show you and tell you and what they need at every given point is definitely going to be the easier way to lead because then it's not all on you. It's a teamwork. It's a co-creation. And that is so beautiful. The thought of doing it together with your child and being so open to ask them, what do you need? And being willing to hear the answers. Everett and I are always constantly practicing embodiment through different ways. So for us, it's movement. So we all day, we will have music playing in the house. We love dancing. We go in front of the mirror. (laughs) It's so cute to see Everett in front of the mirror, looking at himself in the eyes and dancing in front of the mirror so that he can see himself and fully know that that's who he is. Like we have a big, big mirror in the hallway. And each time we go past the mirror, I make sure to stop and look at myself in the eyes. And that is a practice that Everett, even this young, you can see him stop and check himself out in the mirror. And being in your body is is so very important. And I think it's so easy for us to just keep moving and disconnect from our body because I mean, life gets busy, but being present for each situation. So like if we're changing his diaper, like being so fully present and letting him know what I'm doing and talking him through what is happening when I'm putting his legs in the pants, like right leg, left leg, right arm, left arm, put your head in. Like I'm constantly communicating with him what is happening to his body so that he is so well aware of himself. Because I think a lot of times we just do things on autopilot and what this does vocalizing what you're doing to your child at any given time. Like, I'm going to give you a hug now. Like, (laughs) like, can I pick you up? Do you want me to pick you up? Like giving them even as young as almost two, giving them these choices I think it, what it does, it helps them to know themselves, even at a, such a young age. And so I make it a practice of every day, ever since he was a, ch- a baby, to talk to him about what is happening to him. A lot of movement. We work on a lot of movement and dancing and mirror work. And, and I know to some people it might seem extreme, <laughs> but really I do see the difference in my son of me being so conscious and aware of it. I see a difference of how he is the conscious confidence in him right now. And the knowing that he he's already wanting to be potty trained. He's already asking me for things. There are our mirrors, like our children are little mini versions of ourselves. And so if we are acting from a centered place, from a present place, they can't help but do the same thing because that's all they're going to see. That's all they're going to know. And even when they go out into the world, because you've been doing it and it's part of your life, It becomes who they are. Let me reintroduce myself and get honest with you. In 2020, I was motivated to change things up. The pandemic accelerated things that I was forced to close Josie Joe hair design after over a decade in business. I started my first podcast, Backroads, because I loved to travel and I loved the travel industry and also personal development that happens when you travel, especially as a solo traveler. I got burned out after winging it with my podcast for 21 episodes and doing everything on my own. And I love to teach and podcasting was still tugging at my heart. And I got inspired by motherhood and started the current podcast, Make Life Fun, that you're listening to today. And this show, Make Life Fun, was inspired by my journey of motherhood where I just did not feel like I was going to be the mother that I wanted to be. I thought it was just going to be a hard job. I thought it was just going to be 21 years, 18 years of this like hard knock life because I've heard from so many mamas and so many moms how hard motherhood is. And so when I came up with Make Life Fun, it was like, can we make it fun? (laughs) Can we make it easy? Is there a better way to do this? And that gave birth to this show today that we are over 70 episodes now. So over two years in my business, I still felt like I was throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like I loved what I was doing and I loved how I was showing up and the mindset piece was on point, but it still was not working. I had done a lot of deep diving and personal development work and still nothing, right? And so I have to find a different way. I had to find a different tool. I had to find a whole new tool box of tools. (laughs) And I realized that I wasn't in alignment with myself. I wasn't connected with my soul purpose. I wasn't, it wasn't a deep soul full body alignment. I was moving from my head space. I was moving from a place of this is what I should do instead of a heart led, soul led. This is what I'm doing because it feels so good. This is what I'm talking about because it lights me up. This 
is it. And when you move in that alignment and you're moving in that way of being pulled by your vision, it's a whole new way of being. And on the outside, I still looked shiny and happy. It looked like everything was working. It looked like I had everything together. And on the inside, I was completely having a totally different experience. I discovered that I had shut down parts of myself because I didn't feel safe. I've been called too much so many times in my childhood that I felt my power of that too much, I had to hide it. So that led me to feel trapped as a result of hiding that part of myself that is too much for some people who aren't my people. The too much part of me is who I am. The too much part of me is it's the part of me that makes me come alive. The part of me that gets curious. The part of me that wants to push the envelope. The part of me that wants to be $10 million Josie. That is my too much. And I had to go back and embrace that part and reclaim that part of me fully. And that was a mission <laughs> and a mountain that needed to be moved. And so it was a deep diving journey for the last eight months that I've been on. And the results so far that I've experienced from this deep dive is that my husband's gotten a raise and he's 2 x his income. I'm a published author and an international bestseller. I'm showing up in my business like a boss, like a CEO, like a person who is completely in charge. <laughs> and completely owning the space that I'm in. I'm owning what I do. I'm owning how I do it. I am owning my authentic self, my authentic voice. I'm connecting to my whole integrated self. I have welcomed all of me here. I am so in love with all of me <laughs> and all of that. I have found all the parts of Josie that were criticized and beat down, the parts that were called too much, too sensitive. Those parts of me are here now and held, loved cherished. And I am more than anything following my soul calling. I am saying what I want to say. I am doing what I want to do. And I am lighting up day after day serving in this way. And what I want for you is to experience results like this. I want you to feel lit up. I want you to feel so in love with yourself, so in love with your life. I want you to be walking your soul purpose. And I have openings that I've opened up for my powerful coaching experience. And I would love to invite you in to a powerful container where I am holding powerful space for you to experience the transformation for yourself, to experience what it is like to be moving in alignment, moving connected. And together, we have a 60-minute session, this free 60-minute session with me. You're going to get clear on your soul aligned vision. We're going to dive deep and we're going to discover what is stopping you and blocking you. What is in your way? What is it that you can't see right now? And we're going to create a plan so you can take the next best step that has you taking powerful, aligned, soul-aligned action that will have you creating your vision with greater ease because it's, there's a difference from forcing and pushing versus alignment and flow. And I want to help you get into alignment and flow. And whatever it is that you're creating right now, whatever challenge you're having right now, whether it is you're feeling like you need more self-love, where you're feeling like you need help with your parenting, your motherhood, motherhood is hard. Whatever it is in your life right now that you feel is a challenge, I can hold space for you to look at it differently and create a plan that helps you break through that. So you know where to find me, backrosecoaching.com. Go to the contact page and you can go ahead and book yourself a free 60-minute session where I promise you it is going to be all about you. This is for you to share and for me to listen and hold the space that you need to find the answer that is already deep within you. So I invite you in. I, I will talk to you soon. And thank you for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for all the times that you have reached out to me and told me what you're liking about the show and giving me your feedback because they matter to me. I created this for you, mama, for you to gain wisdom, encouragement, and for you to feel like you're not alone. So have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.